this past week. Hi everyone, it's Monday again, and I just woke up, so this should be a really interesting episode if you don't know Jack. Let's dive in. And 30 seconds, people. Hello to you. Donnie here. How many so-called people will be playing? Only one so-called person. Just you. That's not surprising. Go ahead and enter your name. Yeah, you do it. Come on. Oh, come on now, player one. All you have to do is type in your name. Yeah, you do it. Come on. Well, if you don't know your own name, them. I'll give you one. Let's call you Ethel. You look Works like an Ethel to me. Fantastic. Now, listen up for your instructionals. You'll get a question, and when you gleam the right answer, choose the boutonniere next to it. There is a timer that's tick tockling away. That means the sooner you are to buzz in, the more De Niro you'll make. <laughs> or lose. We're almost at places. Ten seconds. Be careful out there. Can I get a jungle check? <laughs> Black. Three. Sounds like a healthy jungle. Hey, I'm Cookie, and y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know me. Nor do we want to. Playing alone, I see. What else is new? And today's wrong answer of the game is brought to you by Digitensil's Electronic Utensils. Say goodbye to analog food consumption. Say hello to Digitensil's. Find the wrong answer associated with our sponsor to get yourself hey. some sweet prizes and bonus cash. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's get this show on the road. I'll be dipped if I can find it today, though. Okay, to get things started, I'm converting. Woohoo! If Miley Cyrus moved overseas and changed her name to Kilometer Cyrus, how much of her name would she lose? 14%, 38%, 52%, or 69%? This is 38% of your name. One kilometer equals 0.621 miles, so Miley would be shaving off 0.38 or 38% from her former name. <laughs> I wonder if that means she'd also be 38% less loud. That would truly be the best of both worlds. Can't disagree. Here's one I like to call ominous news in 30 minutes or less. If the CEO of Little Caesars Pizza gets an anonymous email that says, beware the Ides of March, what should he add into his Outlook calendar? March 1, beware, beware. March 8, beware, beware. March 15, beware, beware. Or March 30, beware, beware. What, no pizza pizza? The Ides of March falls on the 15th of the month, a date that Julius Caesar was warned of and subsequently killed on. <laughs> Little Caesars was actually founded by Julius Caesar's son who vowed to avenge his father's death. And then he got bored of that and started making pizza. I call this one. I'm kicking you out. Please vote for me. On Survivor, contestants who've already been voted out come back to vote on the season's winner. But if Survivor added a grand tribal council with the same duties as a grand jury, what would they do? Find a replacement for Jeff Probst, select the contestants for the regular tribal council, review who can use the immunity idol, or decide if there will be a tribal council at all. Uh, I'm pretty sure the grand jury does this. A grand jury decides whether or not a case will even go to trial. Personally, I think the show would be a lot better if the jury had the power to sentence contestants to death. I wonder if they'd still draw little frowny faces next to the names if it was a vote for lethal injection. I would. Next up, rub some sherbet on your knee. And guess what? It's a dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven things. For each one, I want you to tell me if it's the name of a Baskin Robbins ice cream flavor, or the name of a pain relieving cream or ointment. Oh, I thought this was going to be the 80s hair babble. Press the number one. If it's pain relief cream, press the number two. Each right answer scoops up $300 for you. But get one wrong and you'll be aching for money. And you got to do it in 30 seconds. Ready? Let's go. Asper cream. Mississippi Muppets. Old Metal Ribbons. Icy Hot. 
Australian dream. Mineral huh. ice. Love potion what? 31. Well, you know what they say, I scream, you scream, we all scream for the fact that you didn't quite get all the correct answers on this dis or dat ream. <laughs> now if they could only come out with some sort of ointment for brain freeze. Where's the bow girl? I could use that. Ooh, yeah. Take a stab at Gek of the Morning to ya. Imagine that the Geico Gecko saved so much money on car insurance that he quit show business. What would he be able to do at his retirement party? Kiss all the ladies with his forked tongue? Breathe with gills in his disco-lighted hot tub? Hang from the chandelier with his adhesive pads? Or show off by killing a mouse with his poisonous bite? Forked tongue. Let's go for it. Hello. Here's what a right answer looks like. Although they don't have forked tongues, gills, or poisonous bites, geckos do have adhesive pads on their feet for climbing. Very few, interestingly enough, walk on their hind legs, speak, or give <laughs> a shit about car insurance. Geckos do not have forked tongues. But speaking of forks, you've won an electronic spoon from Digitensil's Electronic Utensils. Take the manual labor out of your meals. Aww. This wrong answer of the game has netted you an extra 4,000. Congratulations. Four. We've finished round one. And you're doing pretty well, probably because there's no competition. Keep in mind, in round two, everything is worth twice as much. Okay, here it comes. Here's a good one. A real wine connoisseur. If you know me, you know I love me some sparkling wine, and I love to sweat. I'm a sweaty, sparkling wine drinker, basically. With that in mind, if brute deodorant were like brute champagne, how could I describe my armpits after applying it? Quite sweet, nice and dry, extremely fruity, or strangely non-bubbly? I have no idea. I'm not a champagne drinker. I'm not an alcohol drinker. I'm guessing brute is dry. Sparkling wines like champagne are classified by their sweetness. The least sweet or driest is the Brut. The only problem with using Brut though is that every time I hail a cab, a cork shoots out of my armpit. Then you're doing it wrong. Next, not so little Miss Sunshine. Considering the past winners of the Miss Universe pageant, which of these child beauty pageant winners will most likely grow up to become Miss Universe? Little Miss Russian Snowflake? Little Miss Venezuelan Tropical Rainstorm? Little Miss Thai Monsoon? Or Little Miss Moroccan Sandstorm? I have no idea, actually. So we'll go with Venezuela. After Miss USA, Miss Venezuela has won the most Miss Universe titles. So Little Miss Venezuelan Tropical Rainstorm stands the best chance of eventually becoming Miss Universe. Lucky guessing you for know, the win. I say there's no age too young to enter a girl into a beauty pageant. I say take some sonogram photos, draw some lipstick on them, attach them to sticks, and dance them around a stage. Blocking chickens picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Open wide for zebras who blow whistles. You know, it seems like every other year some NFL football team changes cities or just disappears. It's the put the choices into order then buzz in and see if you are right. And as always, there's an extra $1,000 for a correct answer on this one. Based on the IUCN red list of threatened species, put these NFL teams in order from most oh to Lord. least endangered. Detroit Lions, Cincinnati Bengals, Carolina Panthers. Bengals, Lions, Panthers, Panthers, Lions, Bengals, Lions, Bengals, Panthers, or Bengals, Panthers, Lions. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's number one. Bengal tigers, like all tigers, are endangered. Lions are vulnerable, and panthers, also known as cougars or pumas, are not in trouble at all. That earned you an extra thousand dollars. Works for me. The uh, pig that made the football is pretty endangered too. Let's try. My friends are all ugly and weird. 
Which Friends characters are least likely to be friends with benefits? Chandler and Rachel, Joey and Phoebe, Ross and Monica, or Chandler and Phoebe? Now let's see, did I learn from the one Jack attack? Aren't they brother and sister? Ross and Monica were brother and sister, so that would be super gross. Although... No, no, no. It's super gross. Hold me, never let me go. Yeah. For once, I have to agree with him. Why not try? My belief system really makes my eyes pop. On what show would Stacy and Clinton advise against wearing zippers? What not to wear if you're Mormon? What not to wear if you're Mennonite? What not to wear if you're Amish? Or what not to wear if you're Muslim? Well, Amish don't wear zippers. Although they all certainly have strict clothing restrictions, the Amish are the ones who are super anti-zippers. And when was the last time you saw an Amish person in a tube top? Lighten up, Amish! Wait, who am I talking to? They're not playing this game. <laughs> Welcome to the attack. When you see two clues that match, press the number one. Four thousand bucks if you're right, but say goodbye to four thousand if you're wrong. But keep this in mind. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. You're the boss of me. If all else fails, say yes sir or ma'am. Good luck. the first one that popped up. That's from The Office, isn't it? E Street Band. Yeah, that's Springsteen. Come on. Professor McGonagall. Uh, what's his face? No. Yes. Peter Parker. J. Jonah. Who are you? Although it should have expected this. M. Where's M? It should have accepted Spider Boss. Liz, who's Liz Lemon? Uh, oh, that's probably Lumberg, isn't it? That's Lane Bennis. No, no. I don't know who that is. I'll have to look it up later. There you have it! I had so many funny quips, clever gabs, and pointed put-downs to dish out, but you had to go ahead and get a bunch of answers right. Well, I have my heart set on these zingers, so you're gonna have to sit there and listen. Number one, whoa, what happened there, no brains? Number two, <laughs> looks like somebody forgot to put on their brain this morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess you get the idea. <laughs> that second one would have been pretty appropriate, too, considering I'm still waking up. But anyway, not a bad episode for me, especially since I you know, just woke up. Anyway, maybe I need to play more of these games less than an hour after waking up. Who knows? Oh well. Helen Hunt. Jim Time to leave you guys with the commercials, and I will see you next week. One medical show. <laughs> Later, all. Movie with the guy from Scrubs. <laughs> it's gonna be big. It's gonna be hot, and it's not gonna smell good. It's farting with the stars, where the only thing louder will be the roar of the crowd. Monday. At, whoop, excuse me. Monday at seven. Be there. Celebrity farts impersonated. <laughs>
Uh, Tim, my parents died in a tragic car accident when I was just 42. In retrospect, maybe I wasn't in any condition to drive. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, will you be my new mommy or daddy? I promise to be a good son. I'll keep my room clean and eat all my vegetables. Except for lima beans. Those things give me horrendous farts. Uh, I'll need a car. And it'd be great if you had an extra room or a basement for my drums. There are thousands of Timmies out there just waiting to find their forever home. If you're ready to start a new-ish family, call the It's Never Too Late Adult Orphanage. Because grown-ups are children too. Thanks again for having me over, Scott. Oh, you're welcome, Marjorie. <laughs> um, so... Is your date night conversation a bore? Yes, yes it is. Please help. We have nothing to talk about. Then try Nigel the Chimney Sweep. He's a real adorable British street urchin who makes an excellent conversation piece. Oh, well, isn't he fabulous? All ragged and covered in soot. Oh, please, miss, help me. I have a family. They don't know where I am. Please help. <laughs> oh, I haven't the slightest what he's saying, but look at that adorable hat. And you, Scott. Well, you seem so, so nurturing. Thanks, Marjorie. Please, please, I miss me mom. Why am I dressed like this? Get your very own Nigel the chimney sweep today so he can start sweeping your loved ones into your heart. Help me. Or heart. Help me. Morning, Ted. Oh, you look horrible. Rough night last night? You bet. It was Carol's and my anniversary, and we didn't get any sleep. <laughs> Sounds great. You'd think, but I don't know. Nighttime's just not the same as it used to be. Sounds like you need some nighttime putty. Nighttime whaty? Nighttime putty. It's just like regular putty, but for nighttime. Huh, how's it work? Here, I'll show you. See, because nighttime putty's made from a water-soluble, stain-proof plasticine polymer, I can mold it around this area here, or even back here, and up over this for a fit that goes on smooth and stays secure all night long. I see. Whoa, what's that part for? <laughs> I thought you'd ask about that. Look, if I bend this back here and open this flap, ta-da! Oh my gosh, how'd that get in there? <laughs> Beats me. Wow, Dan, you sure know a lot about nighttime putty. Hey, my late night buddy is nighttime putty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Dan. <laughs> Next week on a new episode of Old People Exceeding Expectations. Mr. Tillman, do you need a hand getting to the bathroom? Oh, leave me you some shred of dignity. I can use the toilet without your help. You don't need to hold my hand. Oh, okay, great. Scream at 